and you can put like 30% down or more, um, you, you can potentially do a no doc loan. Yeah. Um, there's some other cool programs that Citadel has also that we can talk about later with some neat stuff. Um, uh, I don't know if you've checked out, they have a lot of... Yeah, she sent me the uh, yeah, they the have Matrix, a lot, they have a lot, of, a lot stuff. of good stuff. Um, so, um, let's see here. You go to 172? Yeah. I thought that um, a borrower was allowed to do FHA loans, but they were uh, over 60 miles. Yeah, they so changed it. They changed it to they changed it to a hundred. Okay. Uh, is it hundred miles for FHA said? Hundred miles for FHA. two for two FHA properties. Yes, it has to be hundred miles and bigger house, kind yeah. of like. Okay. Yeah, they changed that. Yeah. Does it have to be over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, or just no. higher than the no, no, no. original? It does not have to be over. What if it's in a resort area, though? Can it be? No, sir. <laughs> 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 I if as, I long, to, if as I got long as you're working for a resort, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, How about that? So, <laughs> working, you're working for a resort. How about that? I was just thinking maybe if it was in Kima, you know, <laughs> you got a crib in Sugarland, maybe you can get away with it. Well, you could with a conventional yeah. second home. Mm -hmm. But for FHA, what this is specifically talking about is having two FHA loans at the same at time. At the same time, yeah. So, right, you, have, you bought your house here in Humble, and then you say, well, I want to go buy a house in Kingwood and do an FHA too. You can't do that. But let's say that you want to go and get an FHA loan because you have your house here in Humble, but then you get transferred to Dallas. Right. Well, then you can do that. Mm -hmm. You see? There's got to be some kind of an extenuating circumstance that makes sense to them right. that you would even have to buy another right. house right. 100 miles away. So in that situation, okay, yeah, you're moving over there. <clears throat> now, when it comes down to him renting the house, so, like for example, does he have to... I know we got to factor in that that mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. Unless he has the equity. Now, does, does he have to have also someone lined up to uh, rent the house before he well, purchases? If, well, so if you're if you're going to qualify him with both mortgages and he qualifies, that's that's great. You know, it's obviously what sure. you want to have happen. But if he doesn't have, let's say that <clears throat> he doesn't qualify with two mortgages, then um, then the house, in order to take the rent from the, the previous home, he would have to have at least 25% equity in the property mm -hmm. or have already been leasing that house out for at least a year. And we can only use, what, 75%? You can only use 75% of the rental of the rent income. Rent income. Get, it, get, it gets very tricky when people own other homes and they're trying to qualify. Um, that's, that can, that can, you know, it's gonna take some time to get that one down because, um, you know, just you know, I mean, obviously you have to come get a manager to talk about that type of loan because um, it's it can get a little bit confusing on the rental property. And then if they if they're claiming that income on their tax returns, sometimes they're not claiming it correctly. You see, that's a whole other thing. And so um, Coleman, uh, yeah, Coleman, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can name a person. You know, we can name a deal that we're working on. But it's that, a good, you know. hey, you know, it means that you have frequency though. Yeah, tells yeah. you that a lot of these guys don't even know what you're talking about. So when they get into it, they and then they, you know, you got a lot of loans you're working on, you know, that's it's a sign that you're getting closer to something. Mm -hmm. you oh, know? That's not so I mean, so um, when they get into it, they're going to see all this stuff, and then they're going to know what we're talking about. That's why we're trying to to get you guys to start thinking about this stuff now because it's, it's going to come, and you're going to have to know how to, you know, um, make sure that make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, so if you guys in, in Optimal Blue, if you see a price of 99 with a hundred thousand dollar loan, what does that mean? So they buy it down. Mm -hmm. So how, what is it? So if you see 99, it's a hundred thousand dollar loan. That's uh, yeah. lowering their interest rate. That they, that they're, rate. that we're charging them to, <clears throat> to buy the rate down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how much would that cost on a hundred thousand dollar loan? Thousand bucks. Thousand bucks. So it's not. Is it a lender credit? It's not. No. So if it was a lender credit, we priced at 101 to get the same one thousand dollars over par. So you'll see that when you log <laughs> into Optimal Blue. Um, if an appraisal comes back subject to, what does that mean? Appraisal comes in subject to. What does it mean? Uh, ins inspections. With it's basically with conditions. 
has to be completed before it closes. Yeah. It's, right. it's, it's worth this amount, assuming this is subject to done. this, 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 that happened. Yeah. So there's two things when an appraisal comes in, it can be either as is or subject to. So we want as is. Mm -hmm. If it says subject to, that's subject to completion, subject to repair. So that has to get cured and the appraiser has to go back and reinspect the property and change it to as is. So do they get hit with two inspect like yes. they get they have to pay for they two have to pay for them for to go back out there and inspect it. Yep. They yeah. do that. They did that with Willis. They had to pay another two hundred and fifteen dollars. Was it? Mm -hmm. Two hundred and twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. Yep. It wasn't a reinspection, it was just the guardrail was down and this, you know, they needed to so, okay. Um Stuff man, happens. Uh, claiming, claiming fixed income from Social Security and disability for a family member. Let's say that says, "Hey, being you know, I got this. My my brother over here, I want to use his Social Security income." And but he lives in he lives in uh, uh, San Francisco, and I'm buying a house here in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, can we can we do that? Unless he's on the house, right? Huh? To live in the same house, I thought. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the um, listed on the, on the, as a beneficiary on the award letter. Right, they're, they're, they have to be listed as a benefit. This is assuming that they are on the award letter. Let's say that he's on the award letter. He says, well, I want to put my, you know, my brother on, on um, uh, well, I'm claiming his, uh, I'm taking care of him. And I have this award letter here saying $1,000 a month, and it's got my name on it. But he lives in San Francisco, and I'm buying a house here in Houston. And you can't do it. Why not? Because he has to live in the same house and you have to be the beneficiary. Okay. So the issue here is that just because someone puts their name on a letter doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The under is going to want to know, okay, I mean, why? Like, well, why? Well, okay, he's in, he's, in, he's in San Francisco. Why are you the beneficiary? So you need a, a LOE as well? No, because, well, the thing is, it's so easy to go to the Social Security office and say, hey, can you just add this person? And then you want to claim that income, it doesn't work. It's not that easy okay. because it almost kind of looks like fraud. Right? What if they got like uh, six months here and six months in Florida? Yeah, I mean, if they're living with the, if they're like, mm -hmm. if they're living, you know, let's say that, you mean if they're living in two they're gonna, they're gonna be living with us for six months out of the year. Yeah. And I am offering them, I'm rendering, you know, service to them, mm -hmm. maybe even respite type, uh, type service to them where, but it's only six months out of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, what about in the situation? You know how we have the child support where, <clears throat> if you know the kids are almost eighteen, they can't use that child support, right? right? Now, is that the same thing with Social Security, where, for example, if he's almost eighteen, so the money's actually go you know, go to him now? No, it, 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 yeah, um, not just because it depends on the type of. Um, it depends on the type of uh, Social Security disability. If it's if the child's like permanently disabled you'll probably never get the money. You know what I mean? So it just depends on what the situation is. If it's right. if a child is getting that, or he has that, there's probably something where he's not gonna, right. probably be, yeah, it's probably good. be getting that. Okay. You know what I mean? But what about for Social Security though? I know that's for disability. Social Security. Social Security is for senior citizens. So, um, okay. the only time somebody gets Social Security, if they're less than 59 and a half, they have to have a permanent disability. Yeah. So then it's, you know, it's, that's why it's just SSI, Social Security slash disability. Oh, okay. Well, it's a deceased uh, parent's um, Social Security. Like say there's a minor, the father dies, mm -hmm. the money goes to the, the son because let's say the mom remarried or something. If she wants to use the Social Security that goes to the son as- uh, I, don't, I don't think you could, pa you could pass on Social Security benefits. Uh, after, after you no, after you pass away, that goes back to the government. Yeah, it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't. And well, you can yes, yeah, but that that's not their that's not the repayment of whatever was in that pot. I mean, usually the government keeps that, but there are survivor benefits. Yeah, I mean, but that goes just to the spouse, though, right? Survivor yeah, benefits. Yeah. It doesn't go to the kids. Yeah, it just yeah. I mean, it depends on. Um, it's usually a very small amount. I thought you know, that yeah. Social Security did. But. No. And uh, like I say that, like when my mom passed away and she was getting six hundred dollars a month, I mean, they were on our butt. Were you a minor yeah. though? No, it was just four years ago. So, um, 
And oh, you're saying if you were a minor? Oh, if you yeah. were a minor. So I think as a minor, oh, okay. I thought okay, I didn't know. Oh, that, that happened to us. Yeah. We, when we were kids, when yeah. my parents passed away, um, we got a certain amount of um, Social Security benefits. That yeah, were if you're a minor, potentially that could be. Yeah, and it came up until either hit age 18. If I wanted to extend it to 21, I had to go yeah. be in college, full time yeah. college student. If that happens, you'd have to show evidence of a three year continuance. Yeah, I missed the part about the minor. Yeah, if you're a minor and you then you get it, then you just have to have a three-year continuous. So if you're fi what he was saying, like if you're 15 or over, generally those fixed income benefits are going to cease, or, we, or meaning that we can't use them for qualification. So if the if the guy applies for the loan, uh, or the girl and says, well, I get child support for my son, he's 15, well, we can't use the child support because it's going to cease within three years. Gotcha. But if he's 14, we can use it. Now, if you tell, tell us you have three kids, but one of them is 15 and the other is 8 and 6, you have to back out the 15-year-old, and you can only use it for the 8 and 6-year-old. Okay. So, um, the same thing like the survivor benefits. So, um, so it's just important to, to know what that is. And so, um, what's, a, what's a HUD voucher? Anyone seen a HUD voucher before? I saw it back in Michigan. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to need to explain that one. Yeah, you know, basically uh, the HUD voucher is a Section 8. It's a housing allowance that can be used for qualifying income. Um, so they, you know, mm -hmm. they receive um, a housing allowance from the government and it's through some Section 8 thing mm -hmm. where basically let's say they get $800 a month. We can use that as qualifying income as long as they can show a three-year history um, of receiving that. So um, I'm afraid with Section Eight because that was real big in Michigan. Yeah. It was a uh, lower income. Yeah. Um, so someone says, "Well, hey, you know, Scott, I get this HUD voucher and it's eight hundred dollars a month. Can I use that towards my qualification with my job?" How long have you been receiving right. that right. benefit? Yeah. So um, so that's so can it, can a, a veteran have uh, two VA loans at the second uh, at the same time? Question I had. I think the answer is no. I thought it was yes if it's over 150,000. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Uh, yeah, so you, you can. You um, can. Yeah, so let's say that he says, well, you know, I bought, I have my, uh, I have my, uh, hey, you know, uh, Nick, I have my mortgage out here in Baton Rouge and it's a VA loan and I want to buy a house in Lafayette and uh, with the VA. As long as they, they qualify it with, with their current mortgage, um, 150000 or more, I don't see a problem. Yeah. Uh, but there's no, is there no limit to like range? Well, it has to be like, did he get transferred? Did like, he get transferred? Yeah, what was the reason? You know? But he can't do it if it's like, you know, I just want to buy the house next door or something, or no. I want to move down. No. I don't like that, because, yeah. That's a thought. Yeah, VA can only be used for primary occupancy. No, government programs can only be used for primary occupancy. Sounds good. You, know, you can't use a uh, government loan for second homes or investments. So, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's an important thing right there. Um, so, let's see here. Oh, man, there's some tough ones right there. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> um, so... You got to the 150s yet? Yeah. Okay, where you at? I'm at, um, let's see. Oh, you want to keep a closed book? No, Open discussion. No, no. Well, I'm, not, I'm not even looking at the Yeah. I think this is sharpen the X by doing it the way you're doing it right now. Yeah, if we're not, like, you're reading it, but we're not really looking at our answers and trying to go by memory. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> when am I allowed to order an FHA case number? Question. Does everyone know what FHA case number is? Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't expect a lot of you people to know, and, and this, to wanna, this is something that has to come up. Um, so if you don't follow the sequence when you order an FHA case number, you can, uh, you can really screw your deal up big time. So if you... Um, order an FHA case number um, before the uh, 
before the documents are signed, you have to start the whole loan all over again. Mm -hmm. Got a compliance. So an FHA case number is you're you're basically um, registering this loan with with FHA, and it gets a special number like a spin number or a social security number, right? And it's tied to that house, and you can only order it after the customer signs the disclosures. If you order it before, um, you're out of compliance. Okay. Yep, so, sure. if you order a credit report through Funding Suite, what's the consequence? It's got a thousand right there. Ten thousand stuff. So yeah. I mean, look at it. Ten stacks. That's pretty common when it comes up to fines. Everything's ten thousand dollar fine, ten thousand. Yeah, I've, I've, which I got to go back into and do because I know that once you, if they're paying for their credit report, you can go through Fun and Sweet, but then afterwards you got to yeah. put it all back into a compass so you get that loan number. And that's what I got to do with a couple of them. Yeah, like, and it's just important, like, you know, B, you're talking about running your own branch. You don't think these these new loan officers are going to do shit like that? I didn't. Yeah, uh, dude, do you be, sort of you, ass. you be, <laughs> listen, man, I don't care how good you are, but people, people are going to, people do shit, man. Yeah, man. You, 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 especially when you got 20 people running around here all day, they, <coughs> this stuff happens, man. You know, it's unbelievable. And, and so, and if, let's say this, I had, this happened two months ago. So, what happens if you order or pull someone's credit without their permission? Private, that's a privacy act law, man. You yeah. Brought, you brought but what law. about if it's the co-signer? It's this. You know? Or it's the boyfriend. And you never got permission from the boyfriend. And he calls you up and says, hey, son of a bitch, you pulled my credit. I can give you permission. <laughs> he comes up here with a gun and says, you pulled my credit. So let me ask you this. Uh, on a soft pull, does it count on a soft pull? Or yeah, or it does. It's a, it counts on everything. Because the soft pull, it's a, it's a privacy soft. thing. It's not a, it's not a matter of the... Leaving an inquiry on all three bureaus, just a privacy thing. When, they, when we do pull this soft through Experian, mm -hmm. does, it, does that regi register where the consumer can see it? Only, uh, only business. Yes. Business? No, I register where the consumer can see it. So that's a hard pull. Huh? That's a hard pull. Yeah. Well, well, hard pulls all three. A hard pull is whenever you have all three. Yeah. No, so no, that's why it's different terminologies for what we use. But uh, common terminology, hard pull is when a consumer can see, and you know what I'm saying because you probably know that consumer can see that inquiry. And anybody can see that inquiry. A soft pull is only when businesses can see that inquiry. That's how we or used, if, to, yeah. used to state it that way. But right. a soft a soft pull, we see we say a lot of stuff around here. Right. It's just so you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, 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 and let me just say this: just because we say it, don't make it accurate. Right. A lot of people are saying certain things, but that'll make it accurate. That's why right. I'm always checking to make sure right. before you repeat something, make sure it's accurate. Right. You know, my my understanding of a soft pull was the same thing. Right. That it was it was something that. Companies could see, businesses mm -hmm. can see, but you couldn't pull it up and it wouldn't show up on my consumer right. report. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's yeah. like insurance companies. If you're looking for shopping for insurance right. quotes, right. they you ask pull my social. credit all the time. Yeah. And right. I look at if I go because I subscribe to all three bureaus, but I have a list of laundry lists of you know credit card companies, uh, mm -hmm. insurance companies that pull my credit all the time, but it doesn't affect it. it I got you. Have any adverse, adverse action on that particular report? Right. If right. you got a um, a company that's out there monitoring your credit right now. And you do what we yeah. call a soft pull. Oh, it's right. going to show up as a credit inquiry from Bank of England. Right. So yeah. So it is a hard pull. Then. Yeah. Yeah. I think that yeah. Right. There's just a, That's what right. I It's just a terminology. Yeah. Right. That's a good point. But the the, yeah. the the thing here that um, I just yeah. want to make sure if you're pulling anyone's credit and um, like a co-signer um, or like someone that isn't married to the spouse, uh, like we had one where um, the loan officer. Um, got the tax returns and plugged, saw that there was two borrowers, plugged the information and pulled credit on both of them, and then called the guy later and said, um, hey, can you tell me about your wife? He says, oh, I've been divorced for two years. Ooh. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. And so I had to deal with that. Okay. And so, um, and so, you know, we had a situation uh, out of California where, for Dade, because it's a community property state, we have to pull the wife's credit. Mm -hmm. And um, we had to send out a form that she had to sign that gave us consent to pull her credit. 
even though it was her husband saying, yeah, go ahead and pull it because we know it's, it's you know, it's a community property state. She's not going on the loan. But to be in compliance, we had to have that form and that, you know, documented in the file that she gave us permission to pull her credit. Even though she wasn't going on the loan, it was just because it's in the community property yeah. state. Yeah. What about when we start doing the tri-merge? Do we have to also let them know that we're going to be doing the tri-merge? No, no, you don't have to. They already gave you authorization. Okay. Um, but we, you know, um, nor if they fill if they fill out um, your uh, your online website, that's when they yeah. give you authorization. Um, if they fill out a lead online, then they give authorization. Then whenever they click to apply, it gives us authorization to pull credit. Um, Is it suffice to say while we're taking the application that we just like we we're saying? I heard B bring it up first about. This call may be, mo may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance. Wouldn't it be a wise thing for us to start incorporating? Do we have, the, if it's a wife I'm talking to, do I have your husband's permission? Mm -hmm. Or do we have his permission to pull yeah. his credit? Because he's yeah. not on the phone with yeah, us. I, I didn't know that. So I, I've been just pulling with the wife, with the husband information, and vice versa. I'm thinking it's assault. But I'll be in compliance if that's the case. So I can take a snapshot and look at it. Without without his permission, or him verbally being on the phone, I changed traje the trajectory of my pitch. Now I'm out there get both. Hey, listen, I can't pull it without the husband giving me verbal authorization because everything's recorded. So, you know, I'm gonna have to have the husband here, and you're gonna have to put him on the. On and you about to slow your loans down, dog? Right. No, I'm just saying. I'm, the, I'm just going to ask. I'm just, oh, well, no. See, whenever if they apply online and it's mm -hmm. a joint application, right? Then you don't need to do that. Right, right, right. But yeah. most of the ninety nine point nine percent of what I've done. This is my first time yesterday <laughs> sending out a, a digital application. Okay. I usually do mine verbally. Right. right. Um, Which so, is good. It's good, right, to do that. So, it's good to do that. Right. So I'm going to have to reformat that uh, particular verbiage. Hey, listen, I got to get you know, your permission uh, or your husband's permission or vice versa to actually do that, uh, do, the, do the actual credit because it's a hard point I solve now. Mm -hmm. um, so. Excuse me. Uh, Let's see here. So we on if someone that has ten payments or less on a credit card, we can omit that. No. Why not? It's only on installment oh, uh, nice. secured that we can omit. So 10 if you see less. if you see less than ten payments on a credit card, uh, we can't omit it. No. They can always go, they can always go reach out. There's no such thing. As there ain't no such thing. They can always go re reuse it and, and run, yeah. it, run it back up. Okay. <laughs> so, so on a USD loan, can we omit an unsecured note loan under ten payments? No. So it's a note loan with hmm. uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, one one main one main financial one main financial. They gave me five thousand, but I'm down to ten payments or less. But it was just it wasn't secured against an automobile or this that or the other. What type of? Uh, what type of? It loan? was just a. It was just a, a like like a signature loan. Signature loan. Uh, what type of uh, program are you trying to do? FHA. Or no, he's asking it on on the USDA. On the USDA. USDA. I don't think so. You know, I think on FHA you can omit that if it's down less than ten payments because you could be done, right? Well, it has to be secured though. It's, it's got to be secured. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. And that's that going that's coming up all the time. Yeah. Because people have you know. Wood Forest or one okay. main financial, and they got a few payments left, and we think, yeah, well, they only got six payments left on a on a on a um, installment loan. Let's let's knock that off because they're paying one eighty five a month. But if it's if it's unsecured, you can't do it. Okay. Yeah. For for let's say for uh, FHA foreclosures on credit that are less than five years old, how do we verify the eligibility date? FHA connections. Or if they have a copy of um, the last recorded deed, they recorded. Yeah, let's let's talk about that for a second. So make sure that we're on the same page because this is this is very, um, you know, it can be very easy to make a mistake here. Let's say that you pull the credit and it shows the foreclosure was four years ago. Okay, and you know for FHA and USDA it's only three year seasoning, right? So, okay, I'm going to give this guy a pre-approval, right? Well, the thing is that, yes, the credit report shows that it went into foreclosure four years ago, but what happens is that the time that the, um, the, the deed transferred from the homeowner back to the bank, that record date happens some a different date than the foreclosure date. Mm -hmm. 
It can happen around that time, or it could, it could, be, it could be years later. Okay, um, so you have to find out wherever that house foreclosed in. Let's say it was in Montgomery County. They have to go down to a Montgomery <coughs> County courthouse and get a copy of that record date of the deed and send that to you. And they're going to go off of that date. Okay, and then you also want to check with FHA Connection because you'll FHA Connection is the database that stores that information. It'll tell you when is this guy eligible for another FHA loan. It'll give you the date you just call there. And it could be incorrect, but you at least want to call that. You also want to run CAVERS, which is a, a list, and it'll tell you when, you know, if the guy's defaulted and the dates that he's going to be eligible. But you need to run CAVERS, too. Um, or you can, have, you can have one of the processors run it for you. Um, so, but that's, that's the process. Don't give someone a pre-approval letter if you see a foreclosure, unless it's really old, you know, over five years, uh, until you check this, this because uh, I can't tell you how many loans I've seen people lose because they didn't check this. So yeah, the one in Hawaii that the yeah. it was a, like a, a year difference because it's set up for a year before anybody did anything. Because in Hawaii, nobody's in a rush to do anything, so it took a year for them to record the deed. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, income producing properties are not allowed with FHA and USDA. True. True or false? True. True. Okay. What about ag exempt properties? You can have uh, agricultural. But, but what? They just can't be income producers. Right. Right. Does everyone know what the difference is on this? Okay. So let's say that you know you're you want to be slick and cut your taxes, <laughs> and you don't you know and you want to put a cow on your property. Okay. Because um, <laughs> the people do this, man. So they go and they put a cow on their property, and then they claim an agriculture exemption. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> well, yeah. uh, I know, but well, then what ends up happening? Your taxes that are five thousand now go down to fifteen hundred. Yeah. <laughs> so and so you can do that, and the, and the guy can you can give we can give a loan on an ag exemption, but when that becomes an income producing property, now you have fifty cows. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's an income producing property, and we can't do a loan for that. So that's the difference. No type of loan. Huh? No type of loan. Mm -hmm. Well, a farm loan. We well, a farm, farm loan. loan. We, no, no. He, no, he right. can get. There are loans for him, but not that we do. Right. They're, they're, they're a farm no, loan. Not a government. Yeah, not a not. Well, there are USDA farm loans. Right. But we don't. We don't do. We do. Them. Yeah, there are USDA farm loans, but we don't do them. So uh, he would have to go to the you know to the USDA to get that. But um, I'm just saying that you get people that you got to this this stuff comes up, man. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's just all kinds of stuff comes up, and you have to know how to. What is it? You're at 27 minutes. Okay. So, um, let's see here. Um, we do know, okay. Does everyone know how MCC works? No, break that down, please. Okay. I don't know. You're going to be using that a lot. No, it works, but uh, I'm still fuzzy on the calculation of it. Okay. On, in the different states. Like what part are you fuzzy on? Like the like how Give you me the formula. Like how you okay, okay. Are okay. you determining it? Okay. okay. So um actually I did you ask me Justin a question on that man? I think I did. He's got the formula. Yeah, he's <laughs> it all day. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. He's, this dude's Does that, everyone knows what MCC is? Does everyone know what MCC is or we don't know what it is? Okay. So um, you know, MCC <laughs> is a first time buyer tax credit. Okay, so it's a first-time buyer tax credit, and you have to be a first-time buyer, meaning you haven't owned a home in the last three years to, in order to uh, be eligible for this. Okay, it's not available nationwide. There's only a select amount of states that it's, you're, that it's eligible in, and so um, there's an income cap for the program, and it's typically around the USDA income cap. Sometimes it can be less, sometimes it can be more. Um, so uh, basically, the way that this works is it, it, it helps the borrower increase their purchasing power on what they can qualify for. Okay, so um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a workaround. It's kind of like a workaround. Okay, it is a, it is it is a tax. Uh, it, do, it does reduce their tax liability uh, for their income tax, so it is legitimate, but it doesn't really re reduce their house payment. In reality, I don't I don't, I don't want you to get confused on this. Cause I think a few of you guys when you're doing loans in the beginning, you're telling people. It lowers their house payment 
And <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the guys are telling people that and you can't do that. I think we all yeah. at one point thought yeah. that. Yeah, I know. I'm like, man, so, that's the greatest thing. Yeah. You lower the so pain. I want to make sure that you guys know how it works. And so, um, and like B said, each state that, is, that it's eligible for, um, that the, the, um, the percentage, the factor is different. And you have to find out what that factor is in that state. It's on the, it's on the drive. Um, and so, so like kind of give you an example. Let's say that the guy who's making, uh, or he has a, um, uh, he wants to do USDA and he has a, a 44% debt ratio. DR stands for debt ratio. And, um, he wants to buy a $200,000 home. The rate is 4%. Tax, 500 a month. Insurance equals 100. Equals 80. And this is in Texas. Factor is 40% in Texas. So, yeah. um, so we know with USDA, it's a max. For let's just say it's a it's a six thirty four. Okay. So he says, well, hey, you know, um, Nick, I want to buy this two hundred thousand dollar house, and you're seeing his debt ratio is at forty four percent. Okay. Um, the max credit is two thousand in all states. That's that's a that's a that's a guarantee or fixed. It doesn't matter what state it's in. That's the max. So you know that you got to get them down to 41 or less. And so <clears throat> what you're going to do here um, is, okay, see if I can use this MCC. He's a first-time buyer. He makes, you know, 50K a year, right? So the way, the way, the way it works is you're going to take a This stands for, this is the fact, this is the, this is the, uh, the formula right here. Loan amount multiplied by interest rate multiplied by factor divided by 12 determines how much you can use for the MCC, okay, for the credit. So you take the $200,000 loan times 4% interest times 40% divided by 12, and we can find out what that factor is. Forty for twelve, correct? Mm-hmm. Thirty two hundred. Yeah, two sixty six a month. Yeah, the max is two thousand, so it'll bring it down to one sixty six, right? Mm-hmm. So here, when you divide by 12, it comes out to 266. But you cannot use 266. The most you can use is 2,000 divided by 12, which is 166. So what ends up happening is you take now the 166, and you minus it from here. And what's 500 minus 166? That's 344. What does it come out to? Three thirty-four. Three thirty-four. Yeah, yeah, three thirty-four. So now his new for qualification is three thirty-four plus a hundred plus eighty. And so when you do um, when you do the debt ratio now, 
you're at 334 for the taxes and not 500. But he still pays this in reality. Yeah. This never changes, the payment never changes for him. So you really don't even have to ever mention that to the customer, right? About what? I mean, they're just looking to get approved. They don't need to know about all these. No, you don't want to. You don't want to because that, that's gonna that's gonna it's confuse him. Yes, yeah, him yeah, you, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, you're in in, in Compass. You're gonna put like negative one sixty six, but you don't need to, you don't even ever go into those. So do I ever even mention the MCC credit or the MCC? Credit? Uh, I would, I, I would call. Uh, here's here's you gotta be you gotta be careful with this. Um, if you start telling people like you know like you know Houdini never showed you his his, his magic tricks. If you start telling people everything you're doing then um, they could they could take that information and take it to the other lender. Sure. Okay. okay, yeah. And a lot of times, a lot of the other lenders don't even do this anyway. Yeah. But the fact if they did, um, because you'll get these calls all the time, well, hey, I just got denied by this lender. He says I don't qualify. And we find out we just throw some M MCC on there, we get them approved. So I, I, me personally, I never told the customer. I just called it a first-time buyer tax credit. That's all I called it. Gotcha. I think if you... Don't yeah, want to go yeah I, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Think so, because uh, I don't want them to take the information and then go to another lender with it. Sure. And so, um, so did you have a question, B? No, I was saying, uh, I mean, I, I've snagged a couple uh, that I'm going to bring in just for mentioning it. Yeah. MCC, yeah. The other lender didn't mention that. Yeah. You know, well, so. it's a first time buyer tax credit. Right, right, right. Yeah. I just think that sounds more yeah. uh, enticing or appealing. MCC is like, well, what is that? You know, yeah. so. I feel like that they ask more about the information. <clears throat> like there's a video that I sent to Angelo and it explains more in detail what MCC does. Um, and to get further in detail, I mean, what, they can claim it on their taxes. So they're paying less on their taxes every single year for the life of their loan. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and the way that works is so every year when, they, when they're getting ready to pay their income <clears throat> taxes, at the end of the year, they're gonna get that $2,000 um, uh, 1098 interest statement and that that'll be a reduction to their tax liability and so I want to restart your huh we're 36 I got 37 minutes okay okay what time is it 730 you guys want to keep going or, or? I got a, I got a message today uh, you want you guys get it we can finish it up now if you guys need to get back on the phone or something or we can keep going it's up to you I like learning I'm good doing it I what do you guys want to do Okay. Well, I'm going to keep going? I mean, I feel like we've been over most of this. We're kind of getting into the territory of sucking this. Digging and researching to see exactly where we are. Okay. I'm just going to Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot. I mean, we do have this also on the on the drive, too. I mean, on the YouTube, but, I mean, um, you know. Watch them as I'm Watch them as I'm just... Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you I mean. It sounds like you guys are really catching on now. Yeah. Yeah.